Hello, and welcome to Community Voices, where we talk to Humboldt County's movers and shakers. Today's guest, Alex Ozaki McNeil from Hoppy. And now here's your host, Paul Bursu. Hello and welcome to Access Humboldt's Community Voices. My name is Paul Bursu. I'll be your host. Today we're speaking with Alex Ozaki McNeil from Hoppy, the Humboldt Asians and Pacific Islanders in Solidarity. Welcome, Alex. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks, Paul. You know, I always start out by asking people their positions with the organization and to tell us a little bit about the organization. So that's the question to you. Could you give us some background? Um, yeah, so Hoppy started actually as a Tyco Swing Humboldt and in 2019, early 2019. And our goal was to come together and put on an event with San Jose Tyco um, called Symposium on the Road that was a performance piece that talked about Japanese internment during World War II. Um, and so our goal was to fundraise and throw a big event. Um, and through that process, it brought Asian Americans together in Humboldt County and people got really excited about finding that sort of community up here in Humboldt, where we tend to be more spread out and know one or two other individuals, but to see everybody come together and for a big event like that was really impactful. You're telling me that Putting on the event, as people came together, the idea grew that we should create a, a group, an organization to have more events? Absolutely. Um, so we have through a big event and people got really excited about the prospect of hosting more cultural events like Obon Festival um, and other dance and kind of community gatherings. Um, as well as like a desire to bring together a Tyco class here in Humboldt County. Um, and we're finally able to make those happen after a long period of COVID not being able to gather. What is a Tyco class? Um, so Tyco is a style of Japanese drumming. And we have had some really amazing mentorship from San Jose Tyco. And Humboldt has Gary Roney, who lives here locally and has uh, spearheaded classes to teach people these like big Japanese drummings, uh, drum techniques. And has that been successful? It has. Um, they meet weekly and have classes um, at a private residence and at the Jefferson Community Center in Eureka. And are there other classes that Hoppy is running? Um, right now, leading up to our Obon Festival in August, we have Obon dance classes being led by Craig Kuramata um, at Redwood Racks in Arcata. Why don't you tell us about the festival then, because you've mentioned it a couple of times, and what is coming up, and what is that festival? Um, so Obon is a traditional Japanese festival um, that is a time where our van... Um, where our ancestors come to earth to visit. So similar to Dia de los Muertos, it's an opportunity to uh, connect with our ancestors. So historically, uh, Japanese families will clean grave sites, offer favorite food and drink, pray and dance. Um, so this is Humboldt County's first Obon Festival. Um, we're really excited about it. There's going to be uh, bone dancing. Uh, we're bringing in a Buddhist priest from San Jose. We're really excited to have him come up here to share an altar to honor our ancestors. We're hoping to have uh, food food vendors, kids activities, music, dancing. We invite everybody from the community to come join us. It's going to be on August 14th, uh, Sunday from four o'clock to eight o'clock in the evening. So just a fun community get together in the creamery district of Arcata. So is this usually a one day festival? Is this is your festival marking the end of a week or so that where an Obon festival would take place? Um, Obon is uh, celebrated throughout the summer um, in larger areas like the Bay Area. The different uh, Buddhist churches trade off on which weekends that they're doing different events so they don't conflict with each other. So it's Kind of over the course of summer um, and that weekend in August was just a week that worked well for us. 
So did you, have you gone and attended festivals of this nature and, and kind of seen how to do it? Got a blueprint of how it goes? Um, yeah, a lot of our members of Hoppy have participated in Obon festivals in the past and are really excited to kind of bring back those memories of their childhood and see it happen in Humboldt County. Um, for myself, as a mixed kid growing up in Humboldt County, I think my parents had to make really intentional choices to take me to Obon festivals and other cultural events in the Bay Area. So I think it's really cool to have our first one here in Humboldt. Was this, now you said the community got together and realized the need to come together as a group. How do you go ahead as a group and choose the type of festivals or the type of activities or type of classes that you're gonna be offering? Um, a lot of our projects are just mentioned to us as a passion project from somebody and our group is able to come together really naturally to make them happen. Um, so another project that a lot of us have been involved in is the Eureka Chinatown project. And uh, Bree is the one who spearheaded it and she came to us with an idea for a small plaque in Eureka that commemorates that Eureka used to have a Chinatown and this is where it was located. And it quickly became a much bigger idea where we were able to get a mural and work on street signs with the city of Eureka that are um, informational signs. We were able to name an alley in Eureka, uh, Charlie Moon Way, that talks about kind of one of the more well-known characters from that time period, um, and work with the Clark Museum to offer walking tours of that district. Um, so it's really been a very natural process where somebody has an idea and a lot of people are able to get on board and make it happen. Now, there must be meetings, right? <laughs> uh, we do. We have a steering committee who is able to meet to um, bring some of these to light. And then once people express interest, it snowballs into other meetings and subcommittees and things like that. Okay, so was this your idea to have the festival in Arcata, the Obon Festival. I'm saying that correctly, right? Um, uh, Obon, it, it was not my idea personally. It was actually um, at Swingposium in 2019. We had a ton of community members come up to us and say, wouldn't it be great to have an Obon Festival in Humboldt County? Um, so it was actually a lot of people who had this idea and were thrilled to make it happen. You know, this is almost like a vocabulary lesson. What is Swingposium? <laughs> um, Swingposium is the name of the event that San Jose Tycho and Epic Immersive put together um, that talked about Japanese internment during World War II and combined Tycho drum performances with uh, theater performance. Now, was this the Swingposium? Was this a an event that went on the road throughout California and the Western United States, or is this a it was. Um, so Swingposium on the Road was a traveling performance that was collaborative between San Jose Tycho and Epic Immersive. And they were able to connect with us up here in Humboldt County to be the first performance. Uh, and it was a hit. And then they planned other uh, visits on their tour. And a lot of them were canceled because of COVID. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to pick back up with some of their performances but I'm not sure which locations throughout California they'll be visiting. That's fascinating. They came uh, to you prior to the COVID. So they must be completely blown away, for lack of a better uh, uh, term, that their visit to Humboldt County was, you know, the seed for Hoppy. It's amazing. I mean, I, I was going to ask, and maybe it has happened, maybe not, that has that happened anywhere else where their visit went ahead and was the catalyst to start a group? You know, I'm not sure if um, they've been able to form those same connections elsewhere, but Humboldt County is really lucky, lucky to have the executive and artistic directors of San Jose Tycho take such an interest in our community. Um, they've been able to come up and host um, additional Tycho workshops. In addition to our local teacher, they'll come up and um, teach. They also are going to make an appearance at our Obon Festival um, and have first really been great community partners for us. 
I wonder if that's because of the checkered history, so to speak, that exists and the healing that can be done through having these events. Um, absolutely. I think that the community really comes together and um, Humboldt can be somewhat isolating. And so it's nice to have that connection to San Jose and some of the larger Asian American populations in California. So can you tell us about some of the other events that you've had? Um, let's see, we've got the Eureka Chinatown project. We offer walking tours with the Clark Museum. They're, I think they're $10 a person and it's just a short walking tour through the city of Eureka and it goes around the block that used to be historic Chinatown. And we've got some really great docents that are all volunteers um, that are able to talk about kind of our community history up here. Um, we also are hoping to hold uh, more type of performances with our local troupe, the Obon Festival, and a part of it is just kind of community gathering. So we're hoping to have what we're calling happy happy hour or happy hour, <laughs> um, <laughs> where people can just get together in a much more casual setting, not a meeting or anything like that, um, but just an opportunity to get together with other folks who identify as Asian American. Yeah. Is the group multi-generational? It is. Um, so myself, uh, I have a young daughter who now comes with me to meetings. Um, and my mother is a part of the group. Um, we also have other kind of uh, multi-family units where Amy Ueki and her daughter Chisa have both been involved in a lot of our event planning and uh, materials that we've produced. Um, and yeah, it kind of a span of various age range of people that have been involved. I saw that you had a fundraising event that was uh, Happy Meals, which I thought was a fabulous uh, uh, takeoff. How did that go? Um, it was really great. So we had a, a mini taiko performance and we served meals to go at the Arcata Playhouse. We served kind of like Hawaiian plate lunch style with salad and rice and teriyaki chicken or tofu um, and had little like gift bags to go with it uh, with just like folded cranes and some chopsticks and things like that. Um, and we had a great community turnout. So we have definitely a nice support um, from our local community when we do fundraisers and events. Will there be food as well at the festival here in August? Yes, um, we have talked to a couple of food vendors and are producing some things that will be donation based as well. Fantastic. Now, what about outreach, say, to educational uh, communities here in Humboldt County? Have you spoken with schools? Have you have you gone and done visits? Uh, any of those sort of events planned? Um, yeah, through the Clark Museum, we've done uh, Get Out and Play Day, which is a kids-focused event. Um, we've also been able to work with um, the Humboldt County Office of Ed and talking to some of the teachers through them. Um, we also have some teachers who have been involved and come to our walking tours so they can bring that information back to their classes. That's fantastic. Do you have future projects that are lined up that are, say, in the works, or can you talk about them? I hope you can. Uh, future projects that are in the works. Um, just the Obon Festival coming up on, on August 14th that I can think of right now. However, like I said, a lot of our events have come very organically, so we definitely are open to suggestions on future events and community gatherings. I guess I wanted to know if there was anything organically in the works. Uh, that means, I mean, how long does it take to plan an event? Um, well, Swingposium definitely took us almost a year of planning to execute. Um, and then some of our Eureka Chinatown projects happened within a couple of months. So we were definitely able to move at a much faster pace on some of those projects. And Obon is just a summer planning. So it's taken us maybe two months to get to where we are. You know, but the, I would think the Chinatown project, I mean, it had to exceed your expectations on how successful it all had been. Oh, yeah, we definitely went from a small plaque on the wall to a huge community gathering with murals and art and walking tours and city support uh, for signage and renaming of the Charlie Moon Way. The feedback, do you get very positive feedback from or did you get positive feedback from that event? 
Um, yeah, a lot of community support and positive feedback from our Eureka Chinatown projects. A lot of um, awareness that people didn't realize that Humboldt County had such a colorful history with Asian American immigrants, um, the Chinese expulsion. There was a lot of just um, educational materials that people weren't aware of with our history. Now, was there ever a Japanese community of size in Humboldt County as well? I mean, to have, if the Obon Festival is a, a cultural Japanese event, was there a, a community per se in Humboldt County? Um, not quite as large as the historic Chinese communities in Eureka and other parts of Humboldt County, um, where people where Chinese were brought in to build roads and help with fisheries and other industries. Uh, so not quite the same history. Other groups within the umbrella of hoppy planning uh, events or some sort of well, I guess just events or festivals to celebrate their culture. Um, I know that our local Lao populations have events as well with quite a great turnout and community support as well. Um, and we definitely are looking to collaborate on other events um, as, as things come up. You know, uh, for years, you know, when I taught at Eureka High School, I would go to the Hmong New Year's. That seemed to be the first uh, uh, celebration that I would, um, well, that I, first celebration, Asian-centered celebration that I could remember happening in uh, Humboldt County. Is that gonna be incorporated under the Hoppy group? Probably not under the Hoppy group immediately because they already have their own good thing going, um, but definitely are hoping to connect more on some of those cultural festivals. Um, we did do a Chinese New a belated Chinese New Year celebration in Eureka on an Arts Alive night a couple of months ago, and that was a huge success as well. Do you recruit? I mean, how do you go out and you say people came together for the uh, sim, uh, the Taiko Symposium, Swing Posium. Do you go ahead and recruit? Are you actively putting out word for groups to come and give their ideas? Um, we do have lines of communication with different groups. Um, we've been really lucky to collaborate with groups like Central Del Pueblo and NAACP when we're able to. Um, one of the events that we were a part of last year and are looking forward to being a part of again this year is Migrations, which is a, like a walking festival, I believe put on by the Arcata Playhouse and Central Del Pueblo. And Hoppy has been really fortunate to be a part of that as well. So you talk about groups within the county. Are there other uh, uh, Asian Pacific Islander groups around the state that you might have had contact with as well? Um, we reach out depending on what we're doing for other support. So when we were looking for a mural artist for the Eureka Chinatown project, we were actually able to promote through other Asian American groups from Seattle down to LA. And did you find the person for the, the mural locally or was that a person that came to do the um, so Dave Kim was the mural artist and he was based out of Oakland and Southern California. Um, and we were actually able to bring him up to do the mural. It was, so he's from out of the area, but we were looking for an Asian American artist that had incorporated um, different parts of our history and symbolism into their mural. So we were really lucky to have him. Uh, Kate B is, was his assistant and she's a local ceramic artist. Um, and then even though he's not local, it was really fun to see him making connections. He ended up painting his mural next to Gina Tuzzi, who is local, um, and they had gone to the same art college together. So, kind of a larger question. Explain to me what you think the importance and the, and the need is for groups like this in our time. Um, I think it's really important to foster community. Um, so definitely amplifying and encouraging diverse voices and perspectives in our local community here in Humboldt County. Um, I think that we tend to spread out and not realize that we do have such um, an impactful community here. And so it's really nice to see people gather together and have a common interest. 
Do you see the group ever getting, I mean, this is just another hypothetical, politicized in any way and getting involved in uh, issues of governance, so to speak, that, you know, or asking a city for change. I mean, you guys got the, the road uh, renamed, you guys got the, the area marked up. I mean, do you see yourself expanding as more of a, of a civic interest? Um, I think race is inherently political. Um, however, Hoppy as a group has tried very hard to stay removed from kind of political opinion pieces. Um, we would love to see the city of Eureka issue an apology um, for historic events. Uh, however, that is to come. Has that been drafted? Um, I think that we have a couple of people working on it. However, nothing has been proposed to the city as of yet. So are they going to hear it here first? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that people at the city are well aware of it, um, but nothing official has been issued from the Eureka Chinatown project to the city to ask for any sort of um, apology. If indeed, and I hope it does occur, if indeed that occurs, will there be organization and rallying around that uh, request? Um, I sure hope that the community would come out to support that. Fantastic. And then as a young person getting involved, we'll, we'll uh, wrap with this. What has it meant to you to get involved with Hoppy and to be, you know, planning events, building that community, having those conversations? What's that been like? Um, really impactful to see other people that maybe look like me gather together in this way. When we were planning our events back in 2019, we reached out to a significant number of people who identified as Asian Americans. And I think that walking into a room and seeing 60 plus other Asian Americans there that were interested in planning events um, was really impactful. It definitely was moving to see so many people um, interested and in wanting to find that sort of cultural community. Alex, I have to tell you something. You might be the fastest person answering I've ever uh, interviewed on this show. Anything else you'd like to add uh, before we wrap it up? Um, just kind of to offer an invite to our community to come to the Obon Festival in August. We have uh, we are a nonprofit through the Ink People Dream Maker projects, um, so we have. Uh, request out for any sort of donations that people are interested in making to help fund our permits, the stage, our decorations, everything that we're bringing for the Obon Festival. Um, and our Hoppy group is active on Facebook, so you can find more information on our Facebook page. We also have a nice website. Um, it's hoppyhumboldt.org. Well, that's about all the time we have for today like to thank my guest, Alex Ozaki McNeil, and her involvement with Hoppy. Once again, the festival is the Obon Festival. That's August 14th from 4 to 8 at the in the Creamery District in Arcata. I want to say thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Community Voices. <laughs>